This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. This video is going to take a look at the chain rule. So the first section of this video, we're going to take a look at what the chain rule specifically says, and then the following sections will be examples. Great. Let's get started. So let's talk about what the chain rule says. The chain rule says if f and g are differentiable, then if we want to find the derivative of the composition of the two functions, it's equal to the derivative of f of g of x times the derivative of g of x. Okay, so that's the chain rule. Now, all we have to do is figure out how to use this. And the next sections, I'm going to um, show four examples. So let's try our first example. So let's say that we have a function, which I'm going to call h of x. This is how it usually is. You're given a function, and you're told use the chain rule to figure out what the derivative of the function is. So what do you do? If you were really trying to follow the format of the chain rule, you separate the function into two separate functions. Um, what you do is you'd say, okay, well, what are we doing here? We're cubing something. So we have the cube function is really our base function. What is it we're cubing? We're cubing the 2x minus 1. And we're going to use the chain rule. See, if we didn't use the chain rule, how would we have to do this problem? We would have to take 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1, do that multiplication, which would be time consuming and tedious, and then find the um, derivative of the entire polynomial using the power rule, right? Okay, well, there's a faster way to do it. So the faster way to do it, to find h prime of x, is use this format. I want to find the derivative of the composition. So what do you do? You first find the derivative of f. Okay, so the derivative is uh, 3x. So it would be 3x squared, right? So it's 3x squared. Okay, but you leave the g of x inside the function. So the g of x is 2x minus 1. And then you multiply it by uh, g prime of x. So the derivative of this would be 2x. Okay, so what does this look like? Now, we could write this in a variety of forms, but if I multiply, I'm going to get 6x, 2x minus 1 squared. Yes, if we wanted to, we don't have to, but let's say... If we didn't want to stop here and we actually wanted to expand this whole thing, sure, we would multiply 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1, which you would get 4x plus 1. And then multiply through again, you get 24x cubed, 24x squared, plus 6x. Okay, so which form is better, this one or this one? Many people would just stop right here. And uh, I believe in the AP exam, you could stop right there. Anyway, either one of those is a perfectly good uh, derivative. All right, so here's our second example. So if I have h of x equals the square root of the quantity 5x plus 7, I'm going to use the chain rule. Now, um, just to change this a little slightly before we move on, before we actually start the problem. I'm going to think of this problem as an exponent, right? That's an exponent. The square root is the same thing as the half power uh, because now I could use the power rule. So let's say I wanted to find the first derivative. Okay, again, I find the derivative. Um, okay, now I guess I should do this, especially when we're seeing this for the first time that I'm really taking something to the half power. That is really what's going on here. That is the base function. What is it I'm taking to the half power? 5x 
plus seven. Okay, so the chain rule says let's take the derivative of f. Okay, well, use the power rule. It's one half something to the, well, now I gotta subtract one. Okay, what is the something you're taking? That's g of x, see? g of x is inside, so I still have to have g of x inside here. 5x plus 7. Okay, then I gotta multiply that times the derivative of g of x, which is, take the derivative of that, it's just plain old 5. Okay, so now the cleanup step become uh, comes in. So 5 times that is 5 halves. I have this to the negative half power. Okay, what does the negative half power really mean? It means I have this 5x plus 7. The negative just means it's in the denominator. The half means it's a square root. Okay, and I have 5 halves, so that means... 5 is in the numerator, and then the 2 is in the denominator. Okay, and there you go. I've got my derivative of the h function, the derivative of the composition f of g of x. So here's our third example. h of x is equal to the natural log of x squared plus 4. All uh, right, so again, I'm going to find the derivative. And before we find the derivative, let's separate this into a composition of functions. So I have the natural log of something. What is the something? x squared plus 4. Now, I'm not sure how far along you are on finding derivatives. And if you're new to derivatives, you may not know how to find the natural log. But I'm including this because... There could be some people who are just trying to get a refresher. And if not, hey, you're going to get an advanced look at how to find the derivative of the natural log function. All right, so what do you do? You find the derivative of f. So the derivative of f is 1 over x. The derivative of the natural log is 1 over whatever it is you're dealing with. And here I'm dealing with the x squared plus 4, right? That's our g of x. So normally it would be 1 over x, but we place the x squared plus 4 in for x, composition of functions. Uh, okay, and then we're going to take the derivative of g. The derivative of g is 2x, just using the chain, or sorry, the power rule. All right, so let's play cleanup. If I multiply these two functions together, well, that's easy enough. So I'm going to get uh, 2x in the numerator and x squared plus 4 in the denominator. And no, you can't cancel those x's. Okay, all right, let's move on to the next one. All right, here's example 4. h of x is equal to the cosine of 3x. Okay, again, what I'm going to do is separate this function by describing its parts. In other words, the main function that's going on here is the cosine function. And what is it we're taking the cosine of? It's 3x. So there you go. Now we have our composition of functions. Now we could use the chain rule. Again, you may not have seen the derivative of a trigonometric function yet. Well, here you go. You're going to see it. So the derivative of the cosine function is the sine function. Okay, and uh, it says that we have to have g of x in there. g of x is 3x. I guess I left way more space than I really need there. And now I take the derivative of g. So the derivative of g is 3. All right, so multiply. Now remember, it's 3 being multiplied by the entire function. It's not 3 times the angle. Okay, so it's the function's themselves are being multiplied together. So you got to be really careful with trigonometric functions here. The wrong answer would be sine 9x. Okay, so the correct answer is 3 sine 3x. Be careful there. All right, so I'd appreciate it if you like this video, if you subscribe to the channel, and uh, make sure you go back to mathguide.com. We literally have hundreds of lessons, interactive quizzes, and instructional videos. Have a great day and take care.